everywhere finally burst in the early half today i missed the news that hit nigeria and some african countries in the early half today this is the fact that they're gonna scrap off christianity in africa and in nigeria and the movement is already kicking off now and this alone has sparked up a lot of reactions because nigeria is a christian country and even for the fact that it is a muslim muslim ticket that we are operating on doesn't make nigeria an islamic country at the moment nigeria is a christian country but something tragic is happening the scrapping of christianity have missed all the atrocities of the religious leader in nigeria and in africa and a lot of people have come out to say no to all these things that is happening right now so i will show you the video in this very video you will see everything yourself the reason why they try to remove christianity you will see everything in this video i like us to stay connected to the end of this video if you can share this video and show you share share to different social media platforms let it go viral and if you can share just like it as you're watching it like it give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us with the stay connected i'm coming back again Back to Large Bomb Wash TV. I don't have badness for you today. The home of religious gossip. And the boys who live the fight for Mohammed. What is happening in the Christian world? Join now to make sense with Large Bomb. Hello, my great and wonderful viewers. Welcome in back to Lachipo Watch TV. For those of you coming out on this channel for the very first time, make sure you click the rest of the subscription button appearing on your video screen. And do well to click the notification bell icon so that when you drop a new video in few hours time, YouTube will easily notify you. A lot of things is happening in Nigeria right now, and a lot of people have reacted to this in the early of today. They are already scrapping off Christianity. They are trying to remove Christianity right now. I missed all the atrocities of Nigerian pastors. You know, it's no more the news that for the past few years that they brought Christianity to Nigeria and to some other African regions, a lot of atrocities have been committed with this name called Christianity. You know, this is the time that we're celebrating the death and resurrection of Christ. This is a time where we're supposed to be mobilizing ourselves and increasing ourselves in the gospel of Christ in the Christendom just because we're celebrating Jesus Christ our Lord. But the fact remains that they try to remove Christianity and miss all the things that your pastors and my pastors are doing. So I'd like us to stay connected to the end of this video. You will see the video that causes the troubles in the early half today and the video where they try to talk about how Christianity needs to be removed and all of that. You will see everything. A lot of Christians have been crying in the early half today just because their religion is going. A lot of people have been seeing this coming from afar, but it is finally coming nearer to us. I like us to stay connected to the end of this video. If you can share this video, ensure you share. Share to different social media platforms. Share to different body. Let it go viral. And if you cannot share it, just like it. Like it as you're watching it. Give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us. You know, it's normally news that it was few days ago that a lot of videos came out regarding Pastor Adeboye. And those are the videos where Pastor Adeboye was making some declaration that he is not supposed to make and all of that. We see everything in this video because I'm going to be showing you the videos in this video and these are the videos that have been causing the trouble in the early hour today and another video showcase where Oyedeko was preaching about tithing and all of that and he said a lot of things that he's not supposed to say and that video went viral and a lot of people actually saw that video so that same video i'm still going to play to you in this very video you will hear everything yourself where michael oropo was trying to correct him and all of that and you also see the video where pastor chris himself was talking about masturbation and all of that that it is very good so all our religious leaders have done a lot of of things that is making the government to consider the fact that christianity need to be removed and all of that and a lot of people are saying no this cannot stand nigeria is not an islamic country africa is a place of christianity and all of that but africans are already making their decision and it is the decision that these people made that is going to affect the fate of a lot of people because whether we like it or not the politicians in nigeria and in other places in africa they are actually using this religion as a weapon they have weaponized religion to enhance their rascality and their criminality in the political space and all of that they are using religion to bring down africa and they are using religion to bring down nigeria they are using religion to cause some level of diversity and they are using religion to separate the people and when the people have been separated nothing can be done when the people are not united these people called the political class they will keep increasing their level of atrocities they will keep increasing the way they are mafia in the public fund and all of that and nobody will question them for it because the people are already separated now africans are already coming to their sense they said they need to remove christianity and all of that and when they were weighing everything that will make them to remove christianity they showcase a lot of videos and the videos of nigerian pastors actually showcase in the entire world to see what is really going on to see the atrocities that nigerian geos are using the bible to do 
the way they are using the Bible to be colonizing the mind of the people, everything is showcased in this video. So I would like us to stay connected to the end of this video. You will hear everything yourself. You will hear what Pastor Chris said because the removal of Christianity in Nigeria started from Edo State. They have started from Edo State now. They have kicked off in Edo State. They have started burning the Bible. They have started burning the picture of Jesus in Edo State precisely. I will show you the video in this video. That's the hometown of Pastor Chris. And Pastor Chris came out from this ago. He said he healed and he raised up 50 dead bodies as at last yet in this year. And they asked him the question, where are the dead bodies that he raised and all of that? Now, they have already given the ultimatum that they are going to scrap Christianity on a particular date. You will hear the date in this video. It is a date in November. I can't record the date. You will hear the date in this video. They said they will scrap all Christianity from Edo State in a date on November. And you will hear everything yourself. It is not my own personal opinion. You will see the video yourself. But before then, they have started burning the pictures of Jesus. They have started burning the images of Jesus and Bibles. Just because they said they don't believe in the Christianity again because the atrocities that they used it to commit is too much. Now, stay connected. You will see everything in this video. I'm coming back again. <laughs> you can't see anywhere where Job tithed. So his blessing was not secured. You can't find anywhere where Job tight. No. He was overly committed to giving liberally to the poor. And God is committed to bless him, but there was no security. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can tell you this, if you are not a tighter, you end up a beggar. Man of God is changing suit every day. Every other pastor comes up with rack. Milk tight out of everybody and you keep it for yourself. After 10 years, God's servant becomes a demigod. Others become servant. Malachi 3.2 that we always quote is not for the members. Church started, all of them were friends. And even when God's servant received the seed, it will never go round. After 10 years, God's servant becomes a demigod. Others become servant. Because he will make sure he will create that gap and it will be very clear to know who is in charge. Friends on Elisha and they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. I decree in the name that's above every other name, Christians from every other denomination will bow before you. If you don't want it, you stop it. It's very that simple. The question is, how does one overcome masturbation? The reason you're thinking about overcoming it is because you think it's become a habit for you. It's the way you stop any habit. See, masturbation is not uh, more of a habit than any other habit. Okay, so once you make up your mind, you don't want, you want to break a particular habit, you do it, you stop it, you just stop it by um, getting your mind to think of something else. You, in fact, the way you destroy a habit is to replace that habit with another habit. That is the habit of not doing it. See? But there's something I would, like to, I would like to bring to your mind that may be of help to you because the reason um, you want to stop this is because of what you think it is. If you were in the habit of um, playing football, you probably wouldn't ask us, how can I stop playing football? Because you think there's something wrong with this. All right? So that is where your problem is coming from. But no matter how wrong it is in your mind, get this straight. In itself, it is not a sin against God. Now, I said that for a reason. There are many Christians who think that it's a sin against God and Satan uses it in oppressing them. Oppressing their minds and making them feel ineffective and inefficient in the things of God. But once you get to understand it's got nothing to do with God, it's all about you and your own body, then Satan loses his power to use it to accuse you. Alright? So if you don't like it, stop it. But God's got nothing to do with it. It's your own body. Masturbation is about you and your body. And uh, God is not offended by it. He is only offended by any habit that takes a hold of your mind. And if this takes a hold of your mind and dominates you, God is offended by the fact that you let yourself become enslaved by any habit whatsoever. So let's just, first of all, take the power away from Satan to accuse you when it's got nothing to do with God. In the whole Bible, 
he doesn't say anything about masturbation. Now somebody may say, what about lasciviousness? What about uncleanness? That's not the meaning of masturbation. But you can have lasciviousness and uncleanness in masturbation and as well as in many other things that people do. You see, so they're not isolated to masturbation itself. Uncleanness can be something about your mind, okay? The thoughts that you bring into your mind. Uncleanness can be having uh, uh, this kind of sexual relationship with an animal. That's uncleanness. In fact, that is more of what the Bible calls uncleanness than anything else. And then, um, uh, homosexualism is uncleanness. That's what God means by uncleanness. These are all the things it talks about. So, just be clear that Satan should have no power or dominion over you as far as this is concerned. It can be a dirty habit. It can be a habit you don't like. But it's got nothing to do with God. God's not thinking about it. So you want to stop it, stop it like any other thing. And it's always easier to be able to stop things like this when you know God and I have no problem with it. As long as you are oppressed by Satan, the same devil will push you to do something and make you believe God's against it so he can use it to condemn you. But once you know God's got nothing to do with it and Satan doesn't have the power to accuse you with it, you find you don't even do it anymore. See, you, you, you just, you just don't, don't do it. Today, as Christians, we pay tithe, we make offerings, but many times we pay tithes and offerings with wrong intentions. We think that we are in a casino and that we are investing and God will make us millionaires. And when we don't get the millions, we get disappointed. And we who are here as professionals today, it is a day to interrogate ourselves. To ask ourselves questions wherever we are. Whether we can pass the litmus test. Suppose there was to be a rupture today. That Christ were to come today on the basis of the criteria that is provided in the Bible. Would you get to heaven? Ask yourself that question. It is not the number of services that you attend every year. It is not the tithes and offerings that you pay. Would you get to heaven by your very actions? And this is what makes me make reference to the story of the Good Samaritan recorded in the book of Luke, as I said a little earlier, chapter 10, verses 29 through to 37. And Christ was answering what was essentially a very simple question. Who is your neighbor? That was the question that was posed. And who is your neighbor? It would have been possible for to him to say that your neighbor is he or she who lives next to you. But he did not answer in that way. He said there was a man who was traveling that road, that dangerous road. And he was ambushed by robbers. And when he lay there dying, a Levite passed. Levite, we are Latter-day Levites. They did nothing. Another believer passed, did nothing. And then there came a Samaritan. And in order to understand the context of this story, you must understand the status of the Samaritans during the times when Christ walked on the surface of this earth. And this good Samaritan, we now call him the good Samaritan 
said he took care of him and went to the inn and said take care of him and if there is any ex additional expense you tell me today courtesy of his actions we say he was a good Samaritan how many of you professionals here have found yourselves in situations where you could have been a good Samaritan but you are not how many of you here who are lawyers in government institutions who when called upon to do that which is good and right you seek to be bribed first how many of you here i'm not asking you to raise your hands but i'm asking you to inspect your heart how many of you here who are doctors who upon whom it fell to save life and asked many questions irrelevant questions and lives were lost how many of you here are engineers who compromise the standards and qualities of our roads that you may become rich how many of you how many of you who are reporters here who will distort what we are saying today how many of you because when you find yourself in any situation where your acts or omissions can harm another that other is your neighbor this is the message so as to who is your neighbor changes from time to time but your conduct must never change in other words as professionals we must make painful choices you know many times i listen to fellow christians and they say i love the lord and i do not begrudge them i'm not in the business of begrudging them because they have their duty and right to love the lord but a few minutes later when they are driving on the road they do not love the other motorists and i said how can they possibly be conducting themselves in a manner that could lead to the death of the other motorists and then they say they love the lord in john 1 you are told that you are a liar if you are such a one as that and you know in this country when we say there is corruption or evil or all these other things who are the midwives of corruption in this country professionals we are the midwives look at any institution that is collapsing or has collapsed who has presided over the collapse of such institutions in other words as professionals we are enjoined to make choices but which choices do we make today as christians we pay tithe we make offerings but many times we pay tithes and offerings with wrong intentions we think that we are in a casino and that we are investing and god will make us millionaires and when we don't get the millions we get disappointed choose you now whom you shall serve is what i'm coming to but what i want to say before that is we must change our minds and change our hearts this morning 
I was telling the good president here, and we were reminding ourselves that it's not lost on us that the Bible says that out of the whole group that left Egypt, only two entered the promised land. Only two. Joshua and Caleb. The rest died because they had left Egypt, but there was too much Egypt in them. You can leave Egypt, but Egypt is telling you. So today, we who are professionals here, we must ask ourselves the uncomfortable question. Is Egypt still in us or we have left Egypt and exercised the ghost of Egypt? And that is how I understand the famous statement that is recorded in the book of Joshua at chapter 24 verse 15. Because the people were undecided. The people were undecided whether they should worship God or they should worship little gods. And he says, you must now make a choice. You must not be of two minds. Choose you now whom you shall serve. You know, when I look at us, as Christians, I look at us as professionals, I look at us as a country, I look at the judgments that we make as a country, I ask myself if it is said of us that in determining who is a Christian, there is no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no free. Do you, you remember that? There is no Jew, no Gentile, no slave, no free. But here in a country where we have professionals, one of the greatest diseases is we call it ethnicity or tribalism. We are one of the most ethnic countries on earth. The blood of ethnicity is thicker than the blood of Christ. So that when you are making your judgments, you don't make judgment on the basis of whether you are Christian, but you make judgment on the basis of whether you are Luo, Kamba, Luhia, and when, or Kalenjin, but when you get to the Kalenjin, it becomes Nandi, Kipsigis. Because when you begin to look for the things that divide you, you will find them. I was asking somebody the other day, when we are putting people into positions as Christians, because we claim we are Christian. When you are boarding an aircraft, and you are Luo, do you ever ask, is the pilot Luo? You don't. What you want is a good pilot that will make the thing fly and land. If you go to Deedan Kimathi University, that one may be a little different. But if you go to any of these, and the people will say, we want our own. And these people who say these are Christians, for whom there is no Jew, no? How do we reconcile that kind of conduct? When you want to have the head of the Moi teaching and referral, you want a Kalenjin, but when you are dying, you want an oncologist. <laughs> How do you reconcile that? We must make a choice. But we are not making those choices as Christians who are Kenyans because we want to be nice to each other until the day that we are capable of liberating ourselves from these basic instincts our countries will never realize their potential and I'm urging you 
that we as a Christian body we must now ask ourselves uncomfortable questions in order to give meaning to our Christianity you know I now know churches and there is a very good friend of mine who is an archbishop of the Catholic Church for the moment the Catholic Church is doing a very good job they appoint them differently but I know a church which I will not name because you may recognize it and I want to be politically correct in which you cannot be a bishop unless you are an aborigine of that area we have now put Christ and God into ethnic pigeonholes and it is we professionals who preside over that if you go to different parts of Kenya you are in West Pokot you are in Elgeo Marakwet you are in uh, different parts in Kisi the people who are not professionals never talk about these things it is we professionals who remind them about their ethnicity which ought to be celebrated ethnic diversity is something to be celebrated it is the youth the use of ethnicity as an instrument of judgment and discrimination that must be condemned there is nothing wrong with our ethnicity god in his play in his uh, divine wisdom made us different because he is a god of diversity because diversity is what creates harmony but if we choose to use our diversity to destroy the harmony that we have then we can never realize our potential <laughs> then you go to that primary school then you go to a secondary school in the neighborhood then you go to the university in that neighborhood then you are employed in Wasin Gish in your world the world is only about Wasin Gish you are not exposed even when you claim to be a Christian professional you are not exposed we were told here about the journey of Christianity, the journey of Paul, the journey of movement from the promised land into Malta, into different parts of the world. That is why we have Christianity here, because people thought widely. But the current professional is a professional whose world view is very narrow, and he or she claims that they are Christians. Do you sometimes wonder why therefore we pray and fast and the things that we ought to get we don't get? Because praying and fasting without belief is superstition. That is how I then want to make reference to the book of Matthews. Matthews chapter 25 verses 14 through to 30. You remember the story of that great man, if he was great in his days. The Bible records that there was this great man, a rich man, who was going away for some time. And then what he did was to give to his workers according to the ability. One he gave five talents, another one he gave two talents, and another one he gave one talent. Do you remember that story? And do you remember that when he had gone out for a long time, he came back and to the one that he had given five talents, he asked master, he told him, master, you gave me five talents, I've worked the five and here are my five. Therefore, there were ten and to the one that he gave two, he said, master, I've worked the two and they are now four and he said, good worker. And to the one that he gave one, he said, I know you. You are in the business of reaping where you have not sown, not his words, but my words, but making the point. And then the Bible records and says, and to those who do not have, even the little they have shall be taken away from them, and it shall be given to those who have. As professionals, how do we use our professionalism to multiply what we have for the general good? committed in our community 
committee in Nigeria, committee in Africa. We tell you, Jesus Christ, pack your things and go. That you and all your uh, followers, all your agents, that you people are fake. Those fake miracles that you people are doing to manage, it is fake. We know it's fake. So if you know you can heal the sickness, Jesus Christ, we are putting this question to you. If you can heal the sickness, if your reverend father can heal the sickness, if they can heal uh, any person that is sick, if they can cure any sickness, let them come and meet us uh, on the 1st of uh, November in uh, Irua Specialist. I challenge all the reverend fathers, I challenge all the apostles, they should come so that they can heal any kidney patient there, they can heal any person that have liver problem, any person that have kidney problem, any person who is sick, so that they just pray and the person will get up and go home without paying anything again from the hospital. So I want you people to come and I'm challenging every of you. You say you can raise up the dead. Yes, come there. They will bring out a dead person for you all to pray and let the person walk. You say Jesus Christ can give us light. Yes, we will look for one dead transformer so that you stretch your hand on it and pray for the transformer so that the transformer will give us light. So, put on to that. They tell you that the uh, Bible did not burn. If you put it like this, it will not burn. But when you tear it one after the other, it will burn. So the Bible is just like other novel. If you carry any other book and put it just like this, it will not burn, it burn because it comes together. So as they come to uh, Africa, come to Nigeria, kill our mother, use our children to feed a uh, newborn baby, you can see this little child here now, this little child, if it is in abroad, they will be paying this child. So they put us in zero condition. So we don't want that any longer. So we want our children to train them from school, and those our children will get jobs. So, uh, His body, they say we know, but his body. His body, look at it, his body. They have killed so many of our mother by tricking them in Bini. Even when the Hosa was alive, that bishop the Hosa, he bought so many of our mothers so alone. He tried to make them to mad, kill them without saving them again. It's money. Look at it, it's money. So if you want to burn it, you tear it like this. It will burn. They tell, they tell you that you will not burn. That something will happen to you when you go and burn any say Bible. If not because the Muslim was very strong, the evil thing that uh, the Christian. They say we know, but it's money. I think it's money. Oh, 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 Christ, you must pack your things and go. <coughs> Look at it, we are burning it now. Oh, boy.
Thank you for staying connected, my great and wonderful viewers. You can hear what Nigerian pastors have said. You can see the problem that Nigerian pastors are causing at the moment. And this problem, whether we like it or not, is going to affect a lot of Christians in Nigeria, millions of Christians in Nigeria, and even in Africa. Because these things that Nigerian pastors are doing, they are doing it out of greed. You can see the video where Oyedipo was talking about tithes. And he was talking about the fact that if you are not paying your tithes, you will become a beggar. Now, the question that people are actually asking Oyedipo is that those Saudi that people, those rich Saudi Arabia people and all of that, all those Islamic people that are very rich, are they paying tight? Why are they not beggars? That's the question that a lot of people are actually asking Oedipo at the moment. Now, you come out on podium and you're telling your church members that if you are not paying tight, you will become a beggar. Even though if you are a giver, you will still become a beggar. And make references to the biblical account of Job. He said Job was a giver, that Job wasn't paying tight. It was because Job wasn't paying tight. That was why God did not secure his finance and all of that. That the financial life of Job wasn't secured, and this is a big lie. There's nothing like tight in the biblical account of Job. If you want to teach our church members to pay tight, there's a way we talk to them to pay their tight for church development and church growth. It is not that we should be using biblical references that are not even talking about the tightening thing to be colonizing the brain of the people. And the worst aspect of it is that it was very unfortunate that when the people was actually making this teaching, a lot of people were actually clapping for him because they have so much to leave this man so much, and this is alone is causing the trouble in the Christendom. This alone is one of the reasons why they want to scrap us Christianity from the Nigeria system and even the Africa system at large. You can see what is happening. The biblical account that Bishop Yedipo was talking about about Job, that Job did not pay tight and all of that. Do you remember that biblical account that it was God that was testing Job? God called Satan and said, where comest thou art? And Satan was responding to God that he is coming from the surface of the earth, moving to and fro and all of that. Then God said, have you considered my servant Job? And the devil was talking to God that is it not because you are protecting him you are doing this you are doing that you are blessing him and God said okay go and test him I will remove the wish to which I'm protecting him that did not make you to be able to assess him I will remove it just for you to test him I want to see how faithful Job is to me and all of that it is not because Job did not pay tight that was why his financial life wasn't secure it was because God wanted to test him and shame Satan but when Oyedepo came out he said another thing entirely now Adeboye came out some days ago you can see the video in this video too where it was saying that those people that are attending his church that other people that are not even attending his church they will come and bow down and beg them for food he said people that are attending other churches will come to his church members will come and beg them for food and all of that Adebuye said that in a public space so these people are already causing a lot of atrocities with the name of Jesus they're already causing a lot of things that is not supposed to be here in the public space they're already saying it in the public space and this alone is causing division in the Christianity zone and all of that. It's causing a lot of division in the Christian zone. You can hear what Michael Oropo said as a counter what Oyedeko said. You can see the way that young apostle counters Oyedeko and all of that. And now Pastor Chris came out and he was making reference to the fact that masturbation is very good. That if we're doing it, it's not a sin and all of that. You can see the way these people have finished Africa. You can see the way they have finished Christianity. Even the people that brought the Christianity, they did not handle it this way. Now, you can see the video where they started burning Bibles in Edo State. And this is not what I said on my own. You can see it in this video. They started burning Bible in Edo State. And they are saying that they did not believe in the power of Christianity again because Nigerian pastors have misused it a lot. They said they did not want Christianity to be in Edo State again as at November now. They said on November, they are going to test a lot of people that they are going to go to hospitals. They are going to bring up people that have kidney problems. They are going to bring up people that have infections. 
mentions that pastors should come and pray for them. That if they cannot pray for them successfully, if the prayer cannot heal them, that Christianity will be scrapped off in November. They mention the date in November. You can hear it in this video. You can see the way people are testing God now. Just because Nigerian pastors have turned Christianity to another thing. Just because Nigerian pastors have made people not to believe in the power of Christ again. You can see the way the people are testing God. Even to the extent that they burn the Bibles, they burn the images of Christ, they are ridiculing the name of Jesus. You can see when these things happen in the Bible, a lot of things happen. God showcases his might. But when it comes to the throne of Nigeria, God is watching just because Nigerian pastors have fumbled. They have done a lot of things. They have committed a lot of atrocities. They have colonized the mind of the people. Just because we don't want to collect tithes and all of that, you can see the way he was talking about the tithe thing and say, if you are not giving tithes, you are not going to be successful financially. My dear, a lot of people are not actually giving tithes. I'm not here against the fact that you should not give tithes. I hear what Apostle Michael Rocco said in that video. I'm not against the fact that you should not give tithes. Tithing is biblical. But in a situation where Nigerian pastors are making it to be like, if you're not paying tithes, your life is finished. If you're not paying tight, you are not going to be successful financially. A lot of people are not paying tight. They are very successful. How many tight is enormous pain? A lot of big names is not going to pay tight and all of that. A lot of big names are not paying tight, but they are successful. Even you can hear what Paul Lumumba said in that video. And that man is the voice of Africa. He was talking regarding the fact that how Christianity is going to be scrapped off from Africa. That is when Africa will be relieved and all of that. The man spoke a lot. You can hear what Paul Lumumba said in this video. He said they have use the name Christianity to separate a lot of Africans. They have used religious diversity and all of that to separate Africa. And Nigerian politicians and African politicians they are now using that Christianity to be terrorizing the mind of the people. They are using Christianity to enslave the mind of the people so that the people will not be able to take actions and all of that. And these people are in the actual rock chamber there, mafiaing money, mafiaing a lot of money. And when the people want to take action, they will use religion for them. That leave everything to God, that God will be the one to judge them, that you should not judge them, you should not take any action. You can see what is happening, and don't forget, without action, nothing can be done in the state of Nigeria. Without action, Nigeria cannot be reformed, revolution cannot take place. So drop a pin in the comment section of this video. What do you guys think? The only little thing they do not remove Christianity in the Africa space, and if they should remove Christianity, do you think it will do us of more good than what is happening to us now? Do you think so? Drop a pin in the comment section of this video, as I'm going to get another thing for you. Make sure you follow me on my social media handles on Facebook at Life Watch TV and Life Entertainment and on Instagram at Large Book. Guess what, guys? See my next video. Bye.